thing. So it's not happening. RNC Communications Director Sean Spicer with us now. Sean, what do you think of, of all of this? Sean? Well, look, uh, obviously it's the, the debate, you mean? Yeah. Well, I, look, each of these debates gives an opportunity for voters at key points of the cycle to hear from the candidates directly. I think it's, it would have been a great opportunity. I know that there were some scheduling issues. but uh, So I, I, I feel bad for the viewers. But at the end of the day, this has always been and should be about the candidates and their desire to run their campaigns the way they should. And we have to respect that. What do you make of what Donald Trump is saying just in the aggregate? And I wasn't picking Fox or anyone. Just I think there have been too many debates. What do you make of that? Well, look, two cycles ago, we had 24. We had 20 the cycle before. We had managed to get that down to 12. Uh, I think that's a good number. They're, they have been more predictable. The candidates all have had a schedule as to when they are and where they are. Uh, but again, uh, our job as a party is to do what's in the best interest of our candidates seeking our nomination. Um, we tried to put together a predictable schedule that spread debates throughout the country, added a conservative element so that people uh, could hear issues and, and uh, that were on the minds of grassroots Republican voters. But it, it's always going to be about what they want to do or not do. Yeah, I hear you. I think you should have just left it at the two Fox business debates, you know. But that's just me. Um, <laughs> well, you guys, you did a great job. Yeah, well, enough about me. I, this isn't about me. But it's about a show that involves me. Um, Sean, let me ask you about the tone of this election. I saw an attempt, certainly on Donald Trump's part last night, to sound a little bit calmer, more presidential, try to be patient. We're told that party leaders have reached out to him. Some have talked about his tone at party events and the like. Uh, I think he was being very gentlemanly about it. They were trying to be very gentlemanly about it. But I did get the sense from uh, the Speaker as well as Majority Leader McConnell in the Senate that they were kind of lecturing him. Um, did I get that wrong? I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's I'm really not sure exactly what they said and how they said it. Those were private conversations. I think you've heard this chairman talk about it. Uh, it's something that we, we had a report about a couple of years ago. We have, as conservatives and as Republicans, I think better solutions for this country. I think when people hear about why conservative fiscal policies and consider, conservative social policies make this country, make families better, make this country better, they're with us. And I think that in like selling any product, we've got to be cognizant of our tone and how we do it so that we welcome more people to our cause than turn them off. Politics is frankly a game of, 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 of addition, not subtraction. And so I think that, you know, Mr. Trump in particular is a newcomer to this process. Uh, he's attracting a ton of new people to this process, and that's good. But I think at some point, you know, there, there are times when we have to acknowledge to all of our candidates and remind the people who are leaders and activists in our party uh, of, of the way that sometimes some of the words that they're saying are perceived. Sean, do you think, and I think Donald Trump has said this in varying ways, that if he has a big lead in delegates going to Cleveland, the convention, uh, but it's not quite 1237, but it's a huge lead over the closest guy, let's say hypothetically Ted Cruz, it's his nomination. What do you think of that? Well, I, I, I think that, you know, the rules say that you have to get 1,237 delegates. It doesn't say you have to get close. In the House of Representatives, you have to have 218 for something to pass. Um, in the same way that it doesn't say if you get close or if you're this far away. Uh, you know, so I, I think part of it depends on how close. If someone walked in with 1,200 delegates uh, and they were really close, I think the momentum would carry right. them there anyway. But this is, not a, this is not horseshoes, where if you get close, you win. Whoever the delegates that are elected by uh, the Republican voters and activists choose is who becomes our nominee, plain and simple. It doesn't say if you get close or if you're in this percentage. Um, but I would imagine if you're really close to that number, it would be hard to see how the momentum wouldn't go in your direction. Yeah. The reason why I ask is I guess this uh, member of the Rules Committee, uh, I think his name is Curly Hoglin. Am I pronouncing that right? He was on CNBC yes. this morning saying, and I quote, the media has created the perception that the voters will decide the nomination. The political parties choose their nominees, not the general public, contrary to popular belief. What was he saying? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but what I will tell you is, Look, we Republican voters go out and elect delegates in the same way that you elect a member of Congress or an elector to the Electoral College. It's a representative democracy. And those delegates then go to the convention to cast their ballot on behalf of those voters. In some states, they're bound, meaning if right. if 
a candidate gets the vote of that state, then they must cast their ballot for that candidate through the first round or the second round. Sometimes they become what they would call unbound after the first delegate. But those are each state has a set of rules in which govern them, um, and that will be up to to that's how those delegates are bound. But they are all elected by voters to go represent them. How they do that and how they carry it out is up to each state party's rules. Finally, after the November election. Are you going to Hawaii just to take a vacation? <laughs> Somewhere warm and sunny, I can tell you that. I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I look forward to it every day. That's, that's a big day for me. I could just see the calendar. One, two, three. All right, Sean Spicer, very good seeing you. <laughs> it's the other way. I count down, not yeah, forward. Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I kind of know how you feel these days. It's the same with covering it. Sean Spicer, thank you very, very much. All right, well, the Supreme Court.